Okay, so next we're going to do the resistors, which on your wiring diagram and your schematic, which came in the radio kit. So this whole time, if you're like looking at these pictures and what we're doing, and it still isn't making sense, but your brain works more like this, this is totally a good reference to use. Um, so next we're gonna do the resistors, which on your wiring diagram looks like this. This little box that side of the pen doesn't work. Um, and mm -hmm, on your schematic also look the same. But that's because this is a Chinese radio kit. And a lot in America, normally resistor symbols look like this. But in all other countries, they look like that. And what the resistor is doing is creating resistance and the electrical flow on the circuit board. So as I was saying at the beginning of the video, when we were organizing everything out, as you'll notice, all of your resistors have different combinations of colored stripes on them. Adding up these stripes will help you figure out the value of each of the resistors, which you can either Google, pull up a resistor calculator, or you can read that really long email I sent you in which I told you all the values on its own. So let's start off by using the 50 ohm resistors. That combination is brown, green, black, orange, brown. There is only one of these on your PCB, which is also the resistors. It doesn't matter. There's not a positive or negative. Like it doesn't matter which way you put them in. That one is right here, I believe. Oh, right, so next we're gonna do the 100 ohms, which in the email I marked down as, I don't know, read the email, but there's only going to be uh, one of them, hypothetically, on here. For the rest of the resistors, what we're going to do is pull up the slideshow of all the pictures we took of the circuit boards during our first build so you can go through and pause and identify where each of them go. But the order in which the pictures are going to be are 100 ohms, 100 ohms. Then we're gonna do the 560. And then we're going to do 10 ohms. Then we're gonna do the 10K. And then we're gonna do the 330. Rock on. Okay, so now we will um, solder on all the pieces, and once you're done with that, you just clip off all the, the ends again. Check it out, you've come so far. Look at how much you have on your board already. That's awesome. So next we're going to put the inductors on. The inductors are these little coils right here. Essentially what they are is they store electricity in a magnetic field that's being created by this coil. So they're an insulated wire, wire wrapped into a coil. These suckers are actually what helps us stay tuned into a frequency uh, when we're searching the airwaves. So let's start off with the bigger ones, which on your board are listed as L2 and L3. And this is the little symbol for them, like this. So 
So we have one up here. Oh my goodness, they're a little bit harder to get in. So we'll bend them back after two. L2 and up here, L3. These are the bigger ones that we're starting off with. And then the smaller one is listed as L1 and you'll find it right here on the circuit board. again bend it back and if you feel so inclined you could solder them on before continuing but I think for now because they're not really taking up that much space we can just keep going so next we're gonna use the transistors which you'll recognize by the three little legs that they have on them you'll also notice that your transistors it will be very 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 hard to see but they do have different values, which are listed on the flat part. Um, and on your board, the symbol for them will look like this. So let's start off with 8550. Oh, I cut myself. <laughs> okay, so our first one. Like I said, we're going to start off with 8550 oh, is going to go right here. And we'll bring up the picture of that also. It's a little tricky to get all three legs in. Oh, okay. There we go. Bend back. And then the next one is going to be 9018, which is just the only other one that you have. Um, which is located uh, on your board, right? Uh. <laughs> okay. So we're going to use, we're going to put our last couple capacitors in place, which are these guys that look like little pillows. Um, so let's start off with the J107C, which looks like it's the two prong one right here. Which goes right here. Once again, bend it back. And then the L107A, which goes right in here. Amazing. And then this seems like maybe a good point to take a moment to solder everything in. So one of the things with soldering, like I said earlier in the video, it's not glue. This isn't what we're using to glue these pieces on. We're creating um, a connection between the pieces and the components. So what's really important, all that being considered, is that you get enough solder on there to actually do it. Because otherwise that connection won't exist and you actually won't get the results that you want from it. So you got to make sure that you have enough of it on there. Um, not just to hold it in place, but because you want that connection on it. Cool. So let's not forget about our PCB too. Ding, 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 ding. Um, so on here, we have a crystal. This is a quartz crystal. Very, very cool. So let's put our crystal on the board. And then last but not least, our diode, which as you can see on the sheet right here, 
This is the symbol for our diode. This triangle. And what the diode is doing is making sure that the current can only flow in one direction. And now what have I done? Great. <laughs> and our diode, as you can see the symbol right here, we're gonna just put it in right here. The crystal is actually acting as a detector or a demodulator. And what that means is with radio receivers, well, let's start with transmitters. When you're sending out or broadcasting a signal, the way in which that works is you have to modulate your audio wave in order to create sine waves that can be broadcasted out. And we call that decoding. So a radio receiver has to have a component that's going to decode those sine waves to turn them back into audio waves so we can hear them through our speaker. That crystal that we were just talking about is doing exactly that. It's picking up the decoded message that's flying through the airwaves and it's demodulating it so we can receive it as the audio signal.